July 20, 1969. Humanity held its breath as Neil Armstrong took that famous That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But fast forward five decades and NASA hasn't sent astronauts to the moon since 1972. Why did we stop reaching for the stars? Buckle up, space cadets. Because we're about to embark on an interstellar journey through the history of space travel, unraveling the mysteries behind our lunar expeditions, and exploring why NASA stopped going to the moon. In the midst of the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union found themselves locked in a high-stakes race to prove their technological prowess, the space race. It all began on October 4, 1957, when the Soviets launched Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite. This small, beeping spear orbiting the Earth sent shockwaves through the American public, igniting a fierce competition between the two superpowers. On April 12, 1961, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space, completing one orbit around the Earth aboard his Vostok 1 spacecraft. His historic 108-minute flight earned him instant international fame and further fueled the competitive fire between the US and the Soviet Union. Not to be outdone, the US was eager to catch up and make their mark in space, but they encountered a few bumps along the way. The first American attempt to launch a satellite, Vanguard TV-3, ended in a spectacular embarrassing explosion on the launch pad. Undeterred, the US pressed on, successfully launching Explorer 1 on January 31, 1958. NASA launched Alan Shepard into space less than a month later, on May 5, 1961, aboard a Freedom 7 spacecraft. Although Shepard's suborbital flight lasted just over 15 minutes, it was a crucial step forward for the US space program. These historic events set the stage for President John F. Kennedy's ambitious challenge to land a man on the moon by the end of the 1960s. On May 25, 1961, JFK addressed Congress declaring, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. With JFK's bold proclamation, NASA kicked its lunar program into high gear. A series of preparatory missions, including the Mercury and Gemini programs, laid the groundwork for their legendary Apollo missions that would ultimately take humans to the moon. The space race involved many other groundbreaking moments, such as the first woman in space, the first spacewalk, and the first docking of two spacecraft in orbit. Each milestone brought the dream of lunar exploration closer to reality. Throughout this cosmic contest, scientists and engineers on both sides of the Iron Curtain pushed the boundaries of human knowledge and technology. In the race to the moon, they developed innovations in rocketry, materials, telecommunications, and life support systems, many of which have since found applications in our everyday lives to the moon and back, the Apollo missions. The Apollo program was a Herculean effort that involved over 400,000 people working together across the US. At the heart of this ambitious undertaking was the Saturn V rocket, still the most powerful rocket ever built, with a thrust equivalent to 85 Hoover dams. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. The tragic Apollo 1 fire in 1967 claimed the lives of three astronauts, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee, during a routine pre-flight test. This devastating event shook the nation and served as a stark reminder of the risks and sacrifices involved in space exploration. NASA took a hard look at its procedures and made significant safety improvements, ensuring that the Apollo program could move forward with greater confidence. The subsequent Apollo missions saw a series of increasingly complex and daring feats. Apollo 8 in 1968 marked the first time humans had orbited the moon, with astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders sending back stunning images of the lunar surface and Earthrise. Apollo 9 and Apollo 10 tested crucial systems and procedures, paving the way for the ultimate goal, Apollo 11. 
On July 20, 1969, the world held its breath as Apollo 11's lunar module, Eagle, touched down on the moon's surface. Neil Armstrong, followed by Buzz Aldrin, took those historic first steps, while Michael Collins orbited above in the command module. The iconic images of astronauts bouncing around the moon's surface captured the world's imagination and showcased the triumph of human ingenuity. The Apollo program continued until 1972, with a total of six successful manned lunar landings. These missions led to several groundbreaking discoveries, such as the Moon's unique geology, the presence of lunar water ice, and a better understanding of the Moon's origins. Additionally, the program spurred advancements in technology, such as computers, material science, and even freeze-dried food. Controversies, conspiracies, and a cold lunar reality. The moon landings attracted their fair share of controversy and conspiracy theories. Some skeptics still insist the landings were staged, pointing to supposed inconsistencies in photos and videos. According to these die-hard doubters, the landings were an elaborate hoax orchestrated by the US government to win the space race. They claim that shadows, flags, and footprints in the photos are evidence of a grand deception. In reality, the evidence for the moon landings is indisputable with retro reflectors and lunar rock samples providing concrete proof of our lunar excursions. Retro reflectors are nifty little devices left on the moon's surface by Apollo 11, 14, and 15 astronauts. They reflect laser beams back to Earth, allowing scientists to measure the distance between our planet and the moon with incredible accuracy. As for lunar rock samples, they have unique chemical compositions that simply cannot be found on Earth, debunking any claims of a hoax. Additionally, thousands of people were involved in the Apollo program, and keeping such a massive conspiracy under wraps for over five decades would be, well, astronomically unlikely. The cold lunar reality is that the moon landings were very much real, a testament to the boundless potential of human innovation and perseverance. The real reasons we stopped moon landings. So after all the groundbreaking accomplishments, the thrilling adventures and the occasional sprinkling of conspiracy theories, why did NASA stop going to the moon? As public interest in lunar missions waned, so did funding. The cost of sending astronauts to the moon was astronomical, and the US government had to make some tough decisions about where to allocate its resources. Meanwhile, the focus shifted to other exciting projects, such as the Space Shuttle program, which provided reusable spacecraft for various missions, and the International Space Station, a collaborative effort to maintain a permanent human presence in low Earth orbit. NASA's Artemis program, currently in progress, aims to land astronauts on the moon by the mid-2020s, with the long-term goal of establishing a sustainable human presence there. This ambitious project seeks to explore previously uncharted areas, such as the moon's south pole, and even pave the way for future missions to Mars. In the grand cosmic scheme of things, NASA's hiatus from the moon is just a brief interlude. As we've seen, the reasons for this break were primarily financial and a shift in priorities, rather than any insidious cover-ups or lack of interest. Our celestial neighbor, with all its untold secrets and curvy nukes and crannies, continues to beckon us, inspiring generations to reach for the stars and take those giant leaps for mankind. After all, as the great Carl Sagan once said, somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. Until then, keep your eyes on the skies and your curiosity alive as the cosmos continues to beckon us with its infinite wonders.